G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and I just wanted to do a quick update video for you guys and let you know what's been happening over this last fortnight because I know I've been missing in action somewhat because I've been so busy doing all these important projects around the property that I haven't been able to upload as much. We've done one or two videos here and there but not as much as I really would love to do. You know, my passion is growing food in the backyard, but I also have another passion and that is bringing this information to you guys and doing videos, which I love to do. But anyway, I've been doing a lot of filming on these projects, so I'll be bringing you these projects in full in proper videos once I can get around to it. But this one is a bit of an update, so let's get into it. Well, apart from still growing heaps of good winter veg here in the subtropics, I've also been, as you can see, building a new raised row of garden beds. Four high set birdies garden beds. This is fantastic and the project has turned out amazing. But it was a fair bit of hard yakker, I must say and I've been hooking in over this last few days. First of all, I had to tear out the old garden bed. That was no easy thing to do, I can tell you, because I make these things to last and the garden bed was pretty well set. Nevertheless, we tore him down and here it is over here, the old planks and some of the Rio mesh. And I'm gonna be repurposing all this old garden bed as well. The wood is still okay, it's fine. Yeah, there's a few blemishes on it. It's a bit old, it's worn, it's a bit eaten in places. But hey, it's still gonna be bloody good. It's better than paying 15 bucks a new plank. But what I'll do is I'm gonna repurpose it back into the Rio mesh tunnel that I've built, built ages ago. And it does a great job for growing vines and kirkabits and tomatoes and I want to bring it back to life and make the garden beds raised so that the plants do better and can climb better and go straight over this dome part of it and then it could be like a kirkabit or a hanging gourd tunnel is my vision for it in the future. But what I can do with this old wood is I can make new wood on the bottom and build those garden beds up and then put these old pieces on top so that when they do eventually rot through I can just replace them from the top and not have to put them on the bottom and then they rot out first before the new stuff on top. So that's how I'll do that. I'm not going to get rid of this rear mesh either. This old rusted stuff is still really strong and worthy for use in the garden as trellises, whack them in anywhere, couple of star pickets and put a piece of this rear mesh in. And it's perfect for climbing plants, peas, tomatoes, beans. I'll be putting that behind the tank and using it when necessary in the main garden. Obviously, I'm gonna let you guys know exactly how this was done and uh, the ins and outs of it, which I think you'll find very interesting, but I'll do that in a separate video. What I'd really love to do now is get stuck into planting in these four raised garden beds but I do have some other things that take priority over that today. Our eldest, James, he's turning 15. Well, he's 15 today. Happy birthday, James. Instead, I'm gonna put this off for maybe tomorrow and go down the back, which is where we'll go now, and light a fire in our fire pit so we can start roasting marshmallows this afternoon. So let's get down there and check it out. And here we are. Now remember my how to make a fire pit video? If you haven't seen it, you might be interested in watching it. I'll put a link up here and in the description below because it's a really simple and cheap way to make a long lasting and very workable fire pit. Anyway, I've got to gather some kindling and get some wood. And while I do that, I'll talk a little bit about what's been happening over this past 10 days or so and what we've been doing around the property. 
Don't touch the electric fence, it's still on. I'm just trying to remind myself. And where am I going to find kindling and firewood here? <laughs> yeah, plenty of it, I can tell you. Yeah, so I finally finished that front garden bed off. That was a lot of work, like I said, especially disassembling it and then all the shoveling in of the dirt and putting the debris in the bottom. But uh, that came off the back of organizing and working on this electric fence behind me. And that's been quite interesting. Remember the video that I did just the other day on the possum that had got underneath the electric fence? ate the cooked chicken, the cooked chook. Well, and I, I finished that video saying that I would do an experiment with an uncooked chook and see how that goes. Well, that was quite interesting. Before I get into the story of the uncooked chook, I'll just get some bigger wood. I think that'll do. That's gonna burn down nicely into a bunch of hot coals. They can roast their marshmallows on it and maybe we can cook up a bit of a barbie later, whatever. But I'm gonna get out of this smoke and fire haze. Let's go down to the bottom corner where I've set up the cam and have a chat about what we've caught on it in the past four or five days since you saw it last. And here he is, the mummified, free-range, non-cooked chook. It's quite odd. I would have thought it would have completely gone rotten and started to fall off its post here. But it's actually dried up. It's almost like it's chicken jerky. Hear that? Well, anyway, it does stink, but not too bad. I was quite surprised that it doesn't overly smell, but we didn't get our fox. And that was the main thing I set this up for, was to attract wild dogs, boars, foxes. And so we could stress test this electric fence. Now, before I get into this, I know that last video I did, where you saw the possum going underneath the bottom run of the electric fence, the tape. And a lot of comments saying, uh, oh, you've got to stop that, and how are you going to stop it? And some people saying that's not going to be any good for foxes and all that. Well, it does actually work on dogs. I know that for sure, because Scooter got stung, and I said that in the last video, and I've since filmed him actually hitting the tape. Oh, there you go. No, it is working. Just got to be grounded on it. God, that scared the crap out of me. Are you right, Scooter? He hasn't come back since. And I would suspect since we've got 200 metres or so of electric fence around here, you know, foxes and dogs in this local area could well have come in from any side and tried to traverse the fence and got hit by the electric fence and gone. And that was the advice of the guy who set it up. Mitchell recommended that even though we don't have any poultry in here at the moment, except for the quail in the quail pen, and that's different, but no free ranging poultry, no ducks, no chickens. He recommended that we still keep the electric fence on to stop any 
dogs and cats and dingoes and foxes that might have been using this property as a frequent place to visit and see if there's any free food here. So they could have hit the fence anywhere around this place and bug it off and then that's a learned habit and they don't come back generally for a long time and they remember that this is a place that they got hurt or it's dangerous and I'll steer clear of it. And then that can get those sort of local predators away. The other thing is I know plenty of people have been giving advice to say stop the smaller critters getting through like the possums and that. Personally, possums are just part of nature here and I'm not really worried that they're getting into the free ranging area. That's quite fine. You've got, you've got other types of animals, other types of mammals that can come into the area. But having said that, I do think there's merit behind a lot of the suggestions to tack on some mesh onto this fence or get a smaller mesh. I was going to do that anyway, to be honest for the simple reason is that when we start breeding up our stock again and start breeding chickens and ducks particularly ducks because i'm interested in breeding more ducks the peking variety what i don't want to happen is the ducklings going out through the dog fence at the moment that'll stop a dog and a, it won't stop a fox because they tend to climb up and get through the bigger holes so that's the secondary reason but the main reason I want to tack on some small chicken mesh wire to the inside of this whole barrier whole fence line is so that I can stop any chicks and ducklings from getting through or smaller chickens from getting through the fence that's the main reason and the second reason is this will stop any smaller animals like cats foxes that can climb up and then get through the middle of the mesh. That would be very hard now at the moment anyway, because the way this is designed with the two runs at the bottom and the one up the top means that that fox, if he's gonna to try to get through several runs up, has to get on his hind legs and then push and get through the fence. He's luckily, it's likely his stomach or his legs are gonna to touch that bottom two tapes. He won't be able to dig under because they're too big to get under that yeah small possum or rodent or whatever or as you'll see seeing something else will get under there but foxes and dogs will not but like i said i'm still going to tack on that chicken wire on the inside and that means even the smaller animals to get over that will either have to climb and if they climb that fence they're going to run the risk of touching the fence and the tape which will give them even a bigger shock than if they were on the ground and touching the tape. And uh, that could be quite a, a fright for them. And in my view, it's a bit of an unfortunate side effect that I've got to block some of the mammals that come through here, like echidnas, anteaters, possums, and bilbies, or any type of other marsupials that might be wanting to get through and go foraging. But nevertheless, that's the way it is. I have to exclude them to ensure that I exclude most of the predators. So now let's get on to what we did see here hitting the fence line. First of all, a rabbit, a bunny actually hit the tape. The thing is, I've got footage, only photos of the rabbit starting to touch the tape. His nose actually hits the tape. And then after that split second, all I see, and all you're gonna see now, is the fence moving violently as he must have got a heck of a shock on the end of his nose and then bounced off the fence. When I came down later, all I saw was some charred fur. No, I'm only joking. There was nothing there. Obviously, he got a big fright and run off into the bush. But I bet that rabbit or hare won't be back ever again. The other thing that I thought was really amazing footage, and Nina watched this as well, she thought it was fantastic, was a goanna. Smelled the rotting carcass, and goannas typically like eating meat that has gone putrid. 
and they smell it from a mile off. The thing is, it's winter at the moment and you very, very rarely see a goanna through winter here in the subtropics, here in Australia. Usually they hibernate, and but the smell must have drawn him out. It was a beautiful creature. Trying to climb up that pole was classic, really classical. And he did a good job, but obviously the mummified chicken was too hard for him to pull off, plus hold on at the same time when he's trying to get up that post. So obviously he couldn't get his fill, but I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll remove this. I might give this one or two more nights to see if we can actually catch a dog or a fox hitting the fence line. I haven't checked the, the last night's tape, by the way, so we could have got lucky last night, but I've got a feeling we haven't. But if we don't get that fox shot that I wanted to stress test this, this electric fence, well, I'm afraid we're just going to have to ditch this experiment for now and then wait until we do get some poultry in here and I'll set the can back up along the fence, maybe two, and we'll see if we have any predators then, canine predators coming in and trying to get through the fence because obviously that's what really will attract them is live poultry, chickens and ducks wandering around this free range area will drive them nuts. They'll be able to see them, they'll be able to smell them, but they won't be able to get through. And uh, that will be very interesting test and see if we can catch anything on camera. We've had foxes, they're a nocturnal animal, but we've had foxes attack through the day here and try to get through the fence and over the fence. So yeah, I reckon we're in for some interesting times ahead and I will keep you informed about it. So yeah, what I'll do is I'll chuck this old carcass away into the bush there and that lizard will no doubt have his feed. But yeah, I was quite shocked that he was out during this time of year, but there you go. There's something else I've learned that just because you don't see them doesn't mean they don't come out and feed through winter here. But we've never seen them. You see, you see them commonly through summer here and going and trying to steal chicken eggs, but you don't see them through winter ever here until then. Well, I think that'll do. The fire is stoked and I'm stoked that we've got several projects done and I can't get this in there. That's him. We've got several projects done. We've been working hard and now we can celebrate with James' party. I'll get out of the way so you can have a look at that fire and this afternoon, roast some marshmallows and sit back and relax, maybe me with a beer and the young fellas can have a softy because everybody's deserved it. We've all worked hard around here over the last couple of weeks and I'm liking the way the property is coming up. Sure, there's a long way to go and there's plenty of other jobs that I need to get done, like the front food forest garden. It's starting to get nicely cleaned up now that we've got rid of a lot of that debris and put it into the front garden bed that we've just made. But we've got the compost piles that need doing. We've got to also, you know, finish off the electric fence. And once that's done, I can bring you that video. So there's plenty of things I need to get done. Plus there's plenty of videos that I want to bring to you too. And uh, like I said, that's my two main passions is working on the property, growing our own food, living this sort of healthier lifestyle and uh, the lifestyle that we want. But also the other side of the passion is bringing you these videos. And I intend to do that for as long as I possibly can. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Also give the video a big thumbs up. Whack your comments down below. I love hearing from you guys. Bye for now. Oh!